So first you go to the player character. Let's walk through what the spline cinematic is. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this up and we'll talk about it at runtime. So you set this input scheme just like any of the other ones, but this one specifically, you can go in, you can use environment aware trajectories. In fact, a lot of times it makes it work much more similar to how it works when you're using a, a joystick controller or, you know, player control. So walking through the features of the input scheme, the target check interval is how often it's going to update your spline target. So this is 10 times a second. This gives a very, very tight spline follow. It's very reactive. However, this works in tandem with target check distance. So that is at 10 times a second, I'm going to go put a spline target a half meter out in front of the character along the spline. However, you can set this number to be quite high, meaning the interval, like it can only check once a second for the compute efficiency. And if the player reaches the target point, the distance point that are the destination that they're going for, it'll just compute the next one because obviously they've achieved their goal. So it, you can set that to be once every 10 seconds, but once the player achieves their goal, they're going to set the new one. So it still may end up updating more often than that. That's just based on behavior. Close enough distances, as soon as the character gets within a certain distance of that point, we call that close enough and we move on to the next one. You have control. So how spines work, uh, consider them that from the, the beginning of it to the end of it is 0% to 100% or 0 to 1 fraction. And so you can specify in the input scheme that I want to pick this spline up, and I'll, I'll show you in a moment, I want to pick the, pick the spline up a certain percentage of the way through. So, or at any given moment, you can set that start point fraction. So say you're running from the start of the spline and you get to about 30% and you want to skip. There's a function that allows you to just set the spline fraction in the helper utility, and you can set that to 80 and it's going to go straight from like wherever you happen to be. It's going to just take a straight line and run to the 80% point and pick up the spline from there. Um, right as for V1 forward traversal is the only, only mechanism that works, but I'll add I'll add reverse as well as several other input schemes. So we'll be adding the uh, uh, player base control. So you can do a rail shooter or you can do, you know, rail configuration to keep your player, but use the player input, but keep it along a spline within certain tolerances. Secondly, you can, it will have a hybrid nav mesh spline that allows you to use the nav mesh to try to accomplish the spline path or use nav mesh to do excursions from a spine path. Uh, this is a very going to be very useful for AI and NPCs. Additionally, that allows you to set triggers along that spline so that when the nav mesh achieves a certain moment in a behavior, you can execute. So say you wanted to run a certain distance or get to a certain area and then do a hard cut and turn, you can use just spline triggers to initiate all those actions and it'll be very adaptive to the environment and much more robust than trying to just add triggers in the environment in real time or anything like that to try to achieve those behaviors based on the nav mesh alone. So it'll get you much more consistency and composability of executing more higher level functions in your game based on the behavior you're trying to achieve. I would recommend leaving this on. I'll give another um, video detailing how these work, but Strafe cam is really important. Face spline normal. So you can set the normals of these splines. That's it. Dream Tech will show you how to do that. Um, if needed, I can add a tutorial in the future how I set them up. But uh, specifically, um, it'll face the spline no normal whenever doing strafe. Alternatively, you can just set it to manual. And then you're taking responsibility for updating the MXM trajectory generator's strafe direction variable yourself. And so when you set that to your strafe target, and, and update strafe direction to point at it, then you take complete control over what direction the character will be facing while they're doing that strafe. So you can do target follows, you can do point focus as you strafe by it or strafe around it, any of those things. And you have control over how often that direction is updated, which is the quarter second. Now that's only in phase spine normal. If you do manual, it will never update because that's your responsibility and you can update it as much as you like. A lot of this is, uh, internal details of how we try to correct the steer if the trajectory isn't getting us to the spline point. Um, so this you can just mess with these to if you want to be more or less responsive to hard cuts uh, and changes. That's also driven heavily by your target check interval. 
And then the input vector multiplier. So this, think of this like if you're using the analog stick, one is hard pressed to the end, or if you're using WASD, if you're pressing W, it's going to one. You can modify the intensity of that, the amplitude of it. So if you set that to 0.3, what would, what would normally have been a run will now become a walk. It turns out MMLC has much better functions for that. You can just set can run to false. And there's in the helper function, there's also a force walk with a Boolean that you can use to get that done. Paused is literally what it sounds like. You can just pause traversal of the spline. So if you want to go do other things or you want the player just to stand there, there are other mechanisms to get the player to loiter at a point for a certain amount of time so that you don't have to script that independently. And we'll walk through that as well. And then just like the nav mesh or any non-input based, there's a wanted target. Like this is the wanted spline. So I'll just go ahead and show you how that works. So we have a spline here. And uh, I believe it is called run and sprint. Let's find out. So there he goes. Okay. So he, he should stop at the top of this for a couple seconds. And he's going to pick it back up. And he should do a pretty good hard cut here.